Alex, um, like Alex said, my name is Brian Rahula, and I'm currently a senior process dev associate um, in the genome sequencing platform here at the Broad Institute. And so being part of the genome sequencing platform means that we are the core sequencing facility for all the Broad PIs and collaborators, which means we do all their sample prep and then sequence all their samples. So here at the Broad, uh, we sequence the samples by using a myriad of sequencing technologies. And just to give you an idea of the amount of data that we've been producing, um, starting in 1999 on this graph, we produced less than really five gigabases for the year. And then ending in 2006, we were up over 60 gigabases. And then going into 2006 through 2008, um, we ended at over 2,500 total gigabases produced. And currently, um, in 2008 uh, through 2010, we were up over 140 um, terabases produced. And so you can see from this graphic, our, production, our prediction for 2011 is actually off um, the chart. But um, so now I'm just going to talk about how we at the Broad integrated the PIP and PrEP into um, our Illumina WGS LC process. And so anybody um, that's familiar with doing any sort of Illumina LC should be familiar with um, the graphic that's up here on the left. So as Chris mentioned before, uh, we fragment the DNA, go through end repair, we do an A-base addition, uh, adapter ligation, and then we do the manual gel size selection. So then from there, we do an enrichment PCR um, and then qPCR. And basically the stop signs just show where we have um, built-in natural buffering points into our process. And basically I just wanted to highlight the time sink involved with doing a manual gel size selection. Um, Chris also touched on this earlier, um, but I just wanted to go through it again. So basically, depending on how many samples and how many gels you're going to run, um, for us, in terms of what we were doing before, it could be anywhere between six and a half to seven and a half, and even, like Chris said before, up to like 15 hours in terms of processing time. So basically, um, doing um, manual gel size selection is not um, efficient for building uh, high capacity lean um, LC process. So we were collaborating with our technology exploration group um, and we were looking at uh, eliminating manual gel size selection and integrating the PIP and PrEP into our process. Um, and so um, with this, um, we wanted to do that because we'd be able to um, eliminate the bottleneck of the manual gel size selection. Uh, we saw once we integrated the PIP and PrEP into our process, we saw improved library quality. And what we've seen is increased yields. Uh, we've seen a reduction in our contamination. And I just wanted to highlight this fact right here um, because in one project that we were doing, um, this one particular project, we actually saw approximately 20% of the samples having varying amounts of contamination. And that was before we integrated the PIP and PrEP. Once we integrated the PIP and PrEP, uh, for the same project, we saw the contamination drop to about 1% of the samples having contamination, and that contamination was approximately 2% or less contamination. So it was really uh, integrating the PIM prep into our process that allowed us um, to do that. And it also uh, has a consistent output where we've seen a nice tight size distribution of our libraries. And another reason why we wanted to integrate the PIP and PrEP is because um, to build a high capacity, high throughput process, we had to use um, automation. And so we thought this um, technology would be able to integrate with our liquid handlers, our sample handling, and then integrate with messaging so we could have sample tracking throughout the process. And this technology of the PIP and PrEP is also scalable. To give you guys an idea of the scale, so if you have one instrument, uh, you can run four samples per cassette. And since it's about a two-hour runtime, you could do about three runs per day or 12 samples per day. But if you have three instruments, that jumps up to 36. And eight instruments, you'd have 96 samples a day. Um, and if you're processing five days a week, you could have about 480 samples per week of high-quality um, libraries. And by high quality, what we've seen once we've integrated the PIP and PrEP is this reduction of low molecular weight material in our libraries. So the two graphics I have up on the right, um, these are two size selections of our WGS um, libraries. We did a 500 base pair selection, and also below that is a 180 base pair selection. And what you see, we've basically, once we've um, 
implemented the PIP and PrEP, we saw a reduction in low medical rate shouldering that we've seen compared to our gel cuts. Um, it's also really important for our 180 base pair libraries because with that process, um, after we did the size selection on the gel, we would have to do a test PCR and then run an Agilent and see how many cycles so we could eliminate the shoulder. But um, since we're getting a more consistent output through the PIP and PrEP, we were able to eliminate um, doing that test PCR. So we were able to eliminate the low molecular weight shoulders for the 500 base pair selections as well as 180 base pair selections. Um, and also, we've seen this tight size distribution, which is represented in this graphic on the bottom left here. And so this is for a 180 base pair selection. Um, and we're looking at the insert size standard deviation of the PIP and PrEP libraries versus gels. So the gels is pretty variable. And what we're seeing with the PIP and PrEP are these really nice uh, tight cuts. And it's very consistent, which is really important for analysis um, in terms of stint calling and identifying um, structural variants, such as in gels. Um, and also, we've seen increased yields in terms of diversity of our libraries. Um, so we're seeing uh, more unique molecules with our, within our libraries um, when we use the PIP and PrEP compared to our gel cuts. This is another graphic showing some data from our 180 base pair selections. And I think most importantly, through other process um, and protocol optimizations, uh, along with integrating the PIP and PrEP, what we've seen is actually we've been able to reduce the amount of um, required DNA into LC while maintaining or even increasing our uh, diversity of our libraries. So this is just a graphic showing the versioning of our protocols on the x-axis and the amount of DNA required on the y-axis, and then comparing that to um, the diversity that we're seeing with these different protocol integrations. And so since we're getting improved yields and higher DNA quality, uh, we wanted to build a robust process. And by building a robust process means we wanted to automate this part of um, our process. So we were able to actually automate the loading and unloading um, of the gel cassettes uh, using our primary liquid handling um, robot, which is the Agilent Bravo. Um, so the picture of the Agilent Bravo is on the upper right. Um, and actually, the labware configuration of the actual loading and unloading is shown here underneath it. And then on the picture on the left is the actual deck layout for the loading of the um, cassettes. So basically, what we have here on the deck, um, we have our libraries, which is in this matrix in this matrix rack, um, which is on a flatbed BioCera 2D barcode scanner. And then the cassette doesn't fit directly on the deck of the Bravo. So we had to fabricate um, an adapter that sits on the deck on the Bravo. The cassette sits on the adapter. Uh, and then basically, we integrated linear barcode scanners in a couple locations. So we scan the matrix rack, scans the four libraries that are waiting to be loaded onto the cassette. We actually uh, affix a linear barcode on the loading well side of the cassette, which is also scanned. And then those four libraries are loaded into um, the cassette. But before we actually load, we go through um, a process to normalize the volume in the Lucian modules. So what we've done is uh, we've built into the script. So we're going to loose the Lucian modules first, remove any volume that's there, dispense that into the waste plate. And then we have a reagent plate, which um, has several wells full of electrophoresis buffer. It'll go in those wells and then add 40 microliters of buffer to the Lucian module. We have a pip and prep set up on a bench next to the Bravo. So we can. there's a, a user intervention where the user will take the cassette off the deck and then do a voltage test. And if the current test passes, uh, it goes back on the deck. And we continue with adding um, the samples to the cassette. And then we'll take it and run our standard pro uh, protocols on the pit and preps. And then we do a similar event for unloading where we have fresh tubes waiting for the libraries, we put the cassette back on the deck, um, scans a the barcode, then we um, dispense those libraries in the Lucian module into the fresh tubes, and then scan those tubes. So now we have an association of library to cassette, now to fresh tubes. Um, And so basically, in conclusion, um, integrating the PID prep, we were able to vastly increase our sample prep capacity. Uh, we were able to make a fully automated LC process, which is very repeatable, and it's really robust. Uh, with this, we were also able to integrate 
uh, messaging, which is really important for any type of troubleshooting and avoiding sample swaps. So it's positive sample tracking. And above all, we have higher quality libraries where we're producing really tight size distributions, higher yields, and drastically reduced um, contamination. And what I wanted to point out too is uh, this run chart that I have up on top. So basically, this is about four months worth of data um, showing the um, average insert size of our 500 base pair um, selection. So as you can see, it's a very highly controlled process that we've constructed and you know that's really from the integration of the pipping prep into our process. Um, and these are just some people in our group that worked on this process and designing this process. Laura was uh, paramount in overseeing the production of the libraries through this process. Brian Minnie and Rami worked on the automation side and then John Stocker and John Welsh did a lot with um, the messaging side. And thanks, that's all I have.